Hi everyone! We're going to learn about differential equations and just go through some background so you know what these equations are about. So a differential equation is an equation that contains the derivative or multiple derivatives of an unknown function. So for example, consider the free fall of an object under the force of gravity. And so notice this is an equation, you see an equal sign, and you see a derivative present. And so what we don't know is the original function, in this case because this is the second derivative of h with respect to t, that means the unknown function was the function h. And so differential equations are just these types of equations that involve derivatives. So in this case, let's just talk a little bit about this example. Um, and here m represents mass of our object, h represents the height of the object above the ground. The second derivative is actually, since if you think of height as position, the second derivative is the acceleration of the object. g is gravitational acceleration, or just think of it as gravity. And so negative m times g is just a force due to gravity. So our unknown function, like I said, is h. Technically, it's a function h of the variable t. And this is the height as a function of time. So if our object's falling, then this function that we're, we don't know represents the height at a given time. So the question is, can you find this unknown original function just from knowing this differential equation? So let's work it out. Let's first divide both sides of the equation by m. Okay. Now, we are looking for h, but all we know about is the second derivative of h. So the first thing we're actually going to need to do is integrate. So we're going to integrate both sides of our equation with respect to t. And so on the left side, notice what's going to happen. We went from having the second derivative. Because we integrated, we now have the first derivative of h with respect to t. And on the right side, our variable is t. So in this case, just think of g as a constant. So when we integrate, we have negative g times t to the first power. And then our constant of integration, we'll just call it c1. Then we're going to integrate both sides again because what we're trying to reach is the original function h. So we have its first derivative, integrate one more time, and we have that h, which is h of t, integrating the right side. If we're integrating with respect to t, use your integration rules. You're going to get t squared over 2, and then this is a constant. So when you integrate that, you're going to get your constant times your variable t, and then plus, in this case, another constant of integration. So we started with a differential equation, and we used integration to find our original function. And so just a quick note, the constants of integration can be found if we know enough initial values. So I didn't give you any initial values in this one, but let's say I told you something about um, the initial height of the object and um, the initial velocity or things like that. We could actually find these values C1 and C2. So when solving differential equations, you, the solution that you're looking for, the answer to a differential equation is a function, like we just found. Integration, you'll find, is a useful tool when solving differential equations. And then just know that solutions may not be unique. If you don't have initial conditions, if your answers have arbitrary constants in them, then you can get um, ununique solutions. So the key thing is here, when you're solving a differential equation, the answer is a function. And then differential equations appear when a mathematical model involves the rate of change of one or more variable, or sorry, of one variable with respect to another variable. Think of rate of change as a derivative. So some common terminology for you. A dependent variable depends on the independent variable. So for example, the derivative of x with respect to t means that x depends on t and that x is the dependent variable where t is the independent variable. So based on our choice of t, like let's say t is time, if we plug in different time values, then x is going to be affected by that. The next term is an ordinary differential equation. You can call it an ODE. And this involves only ordinary derivatives with respect to a single independent variable. This is different from partial differential equations, or PDEs. 
These involve partial derivatives with respect to more than one independent variable. So um, if you've taken multivariable calculus, you've seen partial derivatives. If you've only worked with single variable calculus, then you've only seen ordinary derivatives. And then order is the highest order derivatives present in the equation. So if you see a uh, fifth derivative, and that's the highest one, then the order of your differential equation would be five. Okay, now a linear differential equation is one where the dependent variable and its derivatives appear in additive combinations of their first powers. So what that looks like is this equation right here. So notice what we have. We have the dependent variable. If you sort of just focus on this first um, derivative here, this might help you. This is the derivative of y with respect to x. So y depends on x. So the dependent variable and then um, its derivatives appear in additive combinations of their first powers. So first derivative, the, next, the term to the left would be second derivative and so on. This is the, the first one here would be the nth derivative. So maybe this is like the fifth derivative or the hundredth derivative. And that would be the highest one. So we kind of write it descending like this all the way to the second derivative, first derivative, and the original function y, technically that's the zero with derivative. And so all these um, a's and then f, these are all functions of, or, or um, yeah, function, they depend on x. So a sub n, a sub n minus one, all the way to a naught, including the right side f of x here, these all depend only on the independent variable x. So your differential equation has to have these things um, present to call it a linear differential equation. And we're going to look at examples so you can understand how to classify a, an equation as a linear equation, linear differential. So just some things to notice. No power of y, which is the dependent variable, is ever greater than 1. So if you see a power of your dependent variable that's more than 1, like let's say it's squared or cubed or something, um, then it's not linear. We would say it's nonlinear. There's also no products of your dependent variable and its derivatives. Okay, so notice the only time where we have a y times something is y times a naught, which would be something with an x in it. And so it's not y times its derivative anywhere here. And then there's no restriction on your independent variable x. Those things are true for a linear differential equation. So if an ordinary differential equation is not linear, uh, not linear, it's nonlinear. Makes sense, hopefully, just to call it that. Um, and notice I said ODE, so we don't classify PDEs as linear or nonlinear. Well, only ordinary differential equations get this classification of linear or nonlinear. And then linear differential equ equations give rise to solutions more times than the nonlinear ones do. Um, so we are interested in linear differential equations a lot of the times. Okay, so for the following differential equations, we're going to do a few things. We're going to classify it as either ordinary or partial. We're going to give the order. We're going to identify which variable is independent and which one's dependent. And then if it's ordinary, we're going to say if it's linear or not. Okay, so take a look at this one. If it helps, look at your one of your derivatives to figure out which variable is dependent and which one's independent. Right here, this lets us know that y depends on x. So notice what we have. We have a second derivative of y with respect to x times something with an x in it plus the first derivative of y with respect to x. No, nothing else with it. No x's, no y's. And then plus just y, that's the zero with derivative, times something with an x in it. And then it just equals either, in this case, a number, or it could equal something with an x in it. So this one is an ordinary differential equation. And you'll see the difference with partial um, differential equations. This, uh, this notation is actually different. If you've never seen it before, it has a script D. So these are just ordinary derivatives. The order is 2 because the highest derivative is a second derivative. 
the independent variable is x, dependent variable is y, and it's linear. It does fit our linear format because it has the only time it's y times something is y to the first power times something with x. Over here, this is a derivative of y times something with x. And technically, you could say this is like um, just a number one times the derivative uh, of y with respect to x. So this fits our linear format. How about this one? The derivative of little p with respect to t equals k times little p and then times that by capital P minus little p. So lots of p's here, but capital P and k are constants. So little p depends on t. Okay, so this is an ordinary differential equation, just ordinary derivative right here. The order is 1 because this is a first derivative. The independent variable is t. The dependent variable is little p. And this is nonlinear because if you notice, if you distribute this, you will have k times p squared. p is your dependent variable and it can't have anything greater than the first power to, for this to be linear. So because you're going to get a kp squared, this is nonlinear. How about this one? So we have y depending on x. Okay? This is an ordinary differential equation. This is an ordinary derivative. The order is 1. This is just the first derivative y depends on x and then this is nonlinear. So if you notice it, this actually has a y to the negative one power and y being our dependent variable it has to only have uh, first degree, first power, so this is nonlinear. How about this one? We have y depends on x. This is a fourth derivative. Okay, So ODE, ordinary derivative, fourth order y depends on x, and this one's actually linear because if you notice, we have our derivative of y with respect to x times either something with an x or just a constant, which fits our format, and then over here, this right side of the equation is only a function of x, which also fits our format for a linear equation. Alright, last one here. This is actually going to be our first PDE because these are partial derivatives. And you can tell the difference just from the notation. Our uh, script D here is for partial derivatives. This says the partial derivative of n with respect to t. And so this is second order PDE. Notice the highest derivative is 2. And then there's actually two independent variables. n depends on r, but n also depends on t. And so remember, only ordinary differential equations can be classified as linear or nonlinear. So this is all we're going to say about our PDE example. All right, last thing. Let's write a differential equation for the following situations. So first, the velocity at time t of a particle moving along a straight line that's proportional to the fourth power of its position. So we need to come up with some variables. We'll just say that x of t is going to be our position. So Time is affecting our particle's location, so that's why we're saying x of t. And then the derivative of position is velocity. So derivative of x with respect to t is going to be the velocity from our sentence here. And so the velocity, or the derivative of x with respect to t, equals some constant of proportionality, I just called it k, uh, times the fourth derivative of its position, x. So there's our differential equation for this situation. Okay, one more. The rate of change of the mass of salt at time t that's inversely proportional to the square of the mass of salt present at time t. So we're talking about the rate of change of the mass and comparing that to the square of the mass of the salt. Okay, so the rate of change is our first derivative. So I'm just using m for mass, t for time, and because it's inversely proportional we just have our some constant but then we're dividing by what it's inversely proportional to, the square of the mass. Uh, so the derivative 
represented the rate of change, and then m just represented the mass. Okay, so that's our background for differential equations.